So we've had the fortune of being able to look at uh, children that have autism, ASD, neurotypical children, as well as individuals with a specific genetic form of autism, 16P, and understand how their brain works in terms of absorbing sensory input. And by that I mean, for instance, sounds and visual input. Um, and so as we've done this, we can actually look at how their brains are working and functioning and absorbing that input by using what we call functional imaging. So literally MRI scans that look at the brain that allow us to see the brain working, not just the structure, but seeing it work. When we do that and we either give uh, input from hearing, so a sound tone for instance, or visual input uh, by flashing a picture, we can see that those individuals both with autism and with the specific form of autism, 16P, have a delay in how quickly their brain actually registers that input. So there's a delay in terms of being able to get that signal, having the corresponding part of the brain light up and receiving that input. It's more complicated than that. It's not simply a problem with reception, but there are likely downstream problems or secondary problems after that, processing the information, responding to that information. But at a very, very fundamental level, there's a problem in terms of receiving that signal and receiving that input. When you think about that from a practical point of view, you can understand, therefore, how individuals with autism react to their environments and what situations can be particularly challenging, but also in a positive way, how you might be able to respond to that and in, in a good way be able to accommodate that. So you can imagine there are some children with autism that when they get into particularly crowded rooms, crowded classrooms, at the shopping mall, um, they're getting a lot of sensory input. They're getting a lot, of, a lot of screaming in the background, a lot of things going on. It can seem rather chaotic to someone who you can imagine things are going in, signals are coming in, and they're kind of colliding and getting jumbled on top of each other. And it can be quite confusing for that individual. So sometimes you see with kids with autism, they'll just shut down. They're literally, they'll put their hands over their ears, um, they'll run away, they'll, you know, sort of clutch onto their mother's skirt and try and hide, but it's too much. They get overwhelmed by that and they don't know how to react and it ends up being confusing. And so one very simple approach in those children is when you can control it, and you can't always, but when you can control it to be able to simplify that down and slow it down for them so that they can actually absorb this information, and particularly when it comes to an educational situation in the classroom for effective learning to be able to slow that down in a way that they can actually keep up and are not overwhelmed by that situation. So that they've got time to be able to get that input, register that in their brain, process it, go through, and then move on. Rather than just rapid fire one after another, they can actually absorb all that information, not feel overwhelmed, not feel anxious by whatever that, that overwhelming stimulation is, and actually productively react to it and, and move on from that situation.